invite you to turn to Psalm 102. If you're using a Black Pew Bible, it's on page 501. As we continue our series, uh, Auto Response. Uh, without a doubt, one of the most uh, visited tourist attractions in America is Yellowstone National Park. There is one particular place in Yellowstone that is the most adventurous and only the hardiest of hikers would try to get to. It's called the Thoroughfare Ranger Station. It's in the southeast corner of the park. And if you're a ranger and you're assigned to this station, you have to drive about 15 miles into the, uh, for, from the park and then get on a horse and travel 32 miles into the wilderness, which is the shortest way to get to the station. Now, for a serious hiker, this is going to be on your bucket list, and, and people ask why. It's the place in the United States that is the most distance from a publicly maintained road. Uh, the ranger station is 25 miles from any road as the crow flies, and the closest trail from the road to the center of this point is 32 miles. From the sky, it's a dark spot. There are no lights. There is no electricity. It's a place where time is measured by moon and season. Um, what is it about this spot that makes it so attractive to hikers? Why in the world would anybody want to go there? Because it's the remote, or it is the most remote place in the 48 continuous states. It's the farthest place in America that you can go to get away from it all. Uh, 25 miles from a road, uh, not a, uh, a telephone pole. There is no cell service. Uh, there is nothing there uh, except for God's creation. Uh, if you want to go and get away from life, if you want to go somewhere and be alone, that is the place to go. Now, however, though that may be the most remote place in the continental United States, the re most remote place in the world is the heart of a lonely person. As I said, we're in a series called Auto Response, and we're looking at our feelings and our behaviors, uh, those actions, attitudes, and words uh, that we use, uh, trying to keep our emotions from controlling us and learning how to control them. Today we're going to deal with loneliness. And without question, you do not have to look around very much to find a lonely person. According to a recent survey, it's estimated that nearly 60%, three out of five of Americans, say they're lonely. And more and more people are feeling like they're left out, like they're poorly understood or they lack companionship. Loneliness is on the rise. Co coronavirus certainly helped uh, increase those numbers. In fact, the 2020 report by the health insurer uh, Cigna found that there was a 7% rise in loneliness from 2018 in just two years. Uh, that's an amazing amount of people because there's a lot of folks in America. People from all walks of life experience loneliness. Prosperity, power, position cannot rise above it. And I don't think anybody can be more miserable than someone who has no one that cares about them or loves them or looks after them. People who are insulated, people who are isolated. Four days before Thanksgiving in 2013 over in Rotterdam, Netherlands, a construction worker went into an elderly woman's house to replace her gas pipes. Now, they rang her doorbell repeatedly over and over again without response. So they called the police, and when the police arrived at the scene, they found a pile of, of the woman's mail the oldest of which were postmarked 10 years earlier. When they walked in the apartment, they made an unbelievable discovery. They found the decomposed body of a woman who lived there. She had been dead for 10 years. No one checked on her, and no one cared for her. The New York Times featured a study on loneliness and declared our society is experiencing a loneliness epidemic. In fact, this feeling is really a global Epidemic. It could shorten a person's lifespan by as much as 15 years, according to the former U.S. Attorney General Vivek Murthy. He said, during my years caring for patients, the most common pathology I saw was not heart disease or diabetes. It was loneliness. One in six baby boomers live alone. Half of Americans don't even know their neighbor's next name, or their next door neighbor's name. Uh, Generation Z, those kids that are 18 to 22, and millennials, 23 to 37 have the highest rate of loneliness in the United States. And loneliness is as grave a threat to public health as obesity or substance abuse. Now, research tells us that lonely people are more likely to become ill, experience cognitive decline, and die early. God's Word has a lot to say about our feelings. And if you're battling loneliness today, you're in good company. 
the man who wrote Psalm 102 was experiencing a great deal of loneliness, and so today we're going to study what he had to say about this condition. We're reading Psalm 102, beginning in verse 6. Your scripture's up on the screen. It's on page 501 of your Black Pew Bible, and if you're able, I'd invite you to stand for the reading of God's Word. Psalm 102, beginning in verse 6. I am like a desert owl of the wilderness, like an owl of the waste places. I lie awake. I am like a lonely sparrow on the housetop. All the day my enemy taunts me, those who deride me. Use my name for a curse. For I eat ashes like bread and mingle tears with my drink because of your indignation and anger, for you have taken me up and thrown me down. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this word which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We thank you most of all for King Jesus, who suffered your wrath on our behalf. We thank you, Lord, for the precious blood that he shed that washes away our sins. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit that lives inside of us, and we thank you for the presence of the Spirit that we can feel all around us. God, we thank you for the sweet fellowship that we have in this body of believers, this family of faith that we call Oak Grove. I pray, God, during this time, that your word will speak to us, uh, not the words of a man, but the wisdom of God himself. Lord, we ask you to be with us, bless us, in Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. Now, you may hear these words and say, that's exactly how I feel. And if that's how you feel, I have good news for you today. There is a way up and out of loneliness. The first thing we have to do is see the problem of loneliness. Uh, these, are, these are poetic and maybe even confusing words that we hear. I am like a desert owl of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the waste places. I lie awake. I am like a lonely sparrow on a housetop. Now, some commentators have, or translators believe that a desert owl could be a pelican. Who cares about a pelican? Or, or an owl in a desert place. Who gives a hoot? <laughs> uh, preacher jokes. They're worse than dad jokes. Uh, listen, uh, uh, these, these owl, an owl and a pelican, they're, they're predatory birds. Uh, they're unclean. So to the Jews, they would understand this. Uh, okay, not only, if you read the superscription here, it says, a prayer of one afflicted where he is faint and pours out his complaint before the Lord. Jim, is it okay to complain to the Lord? The Bible says so. Yes, it, it is okay to complain to the Lord. He wants to hear your problems. But what this man, this, this, this psalmist is saying is, not only am I lonely, but I feel unclean. I, I feel rejected. I feel despised. I feel neglected. I feel all alone. Or sparrow on a rooftop. How insignificant is a little sparrow? I've told you, Tina and I love to sit and watch birds. And we watch these little tiny birds going around our yard. We actually have a hawk right now who's terrorizing the neighborhood. And uh, my, my wife... Is, is intervening for me to do something about it. Um, I'm just going to pray about it. And, and Now, I told you a few weeks ago when, when we talked about worry, I said, you've never seen a bird that has cardiovascular disease. Well, maybe this will be the first time, and I won't have to shoot him. But a sparrow is insignificant. He's unnoticed. Who cares? God does. God cares. God feeds and cares for these animals. Matthew 10, 29, are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And so if two are sold for a penny, I would say each one of those sparrows is worth half a penny. That seems pretty worthless to most people. And maybe that's how you feel. God cares, and God cares about you, and God will provide for you. And when you are a believer in Christ Jesus, you are never, ever alone. But understand there's a big difference between being alone and being lonely because you can be alone without being lonely. I'm a good example of that. All of my life, uh, I, 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 have, I wouldn't call myself a loner because that gives people the idea of black trench coats and, and jack boots. Um, but I have, I have enjoyed reading. I've enjoyed time of solitude. And we all need times of solitude. Jesus shows us that. He spent a lot of time alone with his father. I'm going to tell you right now, you cannot have a real relationship with God unless you are spending time alone with God. You need to have intimacy with the Lord. You need to, in order to have an intimate walk with God, you have got to spend time with the Lord alone. You can also be lonely without being alone. There are some people who are in a crowd. 
and feel alone. Henry David Thoreau said, a city is a place where hundreds of people are lonely together. We also need to understand that loneliness is not just lonesomeness. See, loneliness is not isolation in space. It is insulation in spirit. The feeling that you are cut off, that you're unnoticed, unloved, uncared for, unneeded, or maybe even unnecessary. And there there is nothing quite like feeling that because we all want to be noticed by people. We all want to be thought about and cared about, and we all want to be loved. We were created for one another. We were created to be in a community, and that's why the church is so important. It's so important that we stick together as a church family and that when something comes up, we don't say, well, I'm going to leave the church. That is the best thing that Satan wants you to do. He wants you to do that. He wants you to get off and isolate and insulate yourself so you can have these feelings of loneliness, uh, feelings of rejection. You need to stay with the church. You need to get involved with the church. You need to get into a small group and into ministries. And you need to minister to other people who are suffering. In his book, Pleasing God, R.C. Sproul wrote, Sigmund Freud once told the story of a schoolboy who was expelled from school for misbehavior. He sat outside the classroom and threw rocks against the windows. And finally, the principal went outside and confronted the boy and said, Why are you throwing rocks against the windows? The boy said, Because I just wanted everybody to know that I'm still here. And Sproul said, So many of us still carry rocks in our pockets. We want people to know that we are still here. See, the reason why we despise loneliness so much is because it is so destructive. The first time God said something was not good is in Genesis 2.18. Then the Lord God said it is not good that the man should be alone. Loneliness can do untold damage to the psyche and to the mind. A 2018 study revealed what most general practitioners struggle with, it's frequent attenders. 10% of their patients take up 50% of the appointments. And I think 100% of those people go to my doctor. Because I make an appointment with my doctor, and I sit in the first waiting room, and then he takes me into the second waiting room where I wait for an even extended amount of time. And the last time I was there, and I'm not making this up, This is not sermon fodder. It's true. I could hear an elderly gentleman in the room next to to me talking to the doctor. And the doctor got finished talking about some medical things and what he needed to do. I'm going to change some medication. I don't know why I had the door open because I could hear every word they were talking. But then the man started telling him about his children and how they never come to see him and basically how lonely he was. You see, 10% of patients take up 50% of appointments because they're frequent attenders. They're lonely people. And they're willing to pay to go to a doctor and see them on a regular basis. See, loneliness is one of the major causes of, of, of suicide. When people get desperate, when people feel so alone, it's associated with a 40% increase in a person's risk of dementia. So loneliness is a problem, and we need to see that problem of loneliness. Second, we need to state the presence of loneliness. In order to to battle the problem of loneliness, we need to understand why we're lonely in the first place. Because there's no way to deny the existence or the effects of loneliness. Remember that show back in the 80s, Cheers? You want to go where everybody knows your name. And if you see a beer commercial on TV... You never see a man or a woman sitting and drinking a beer by themselves. They're always in a group. And that's a subliminal message that when you come to a bar, you don't have to be lonely. See, loneliness can be a feeling of helplessness that no matter what you do, you are always going to be lonely. I heard a story about a a summer evening when a violent thunderstorm was, was raging. A mother was tucking her little boy into bed, and she was about to turn out the light when she heard his voice trembling. She He said, Mommy, will you sleep in my room tonight? Now, the mom smiled and gave him a reassuring hug and said, Honey, I can't do that. I have to sleep with your daddy. And he looked at her with a shaky little voice and said, The big sissy? (laughs) The first thing that you have to do in order to combat loneliness is to determine why you're lonely. And there are different kinds of loneliness. Sometimes loneliness can come and pass in a quick amount of time, or it can come and last and linger a very long time. Dr. Jeffrey Young of Columbia University describes three types of loneliness, transient, situational, and chronic. 
transient can last anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours and periodically almost every single one of us experience this kind of loneliness it's normal and it's natural it's not long-lasting it's nothing really to worry about second is situational loneliness and this can come from a significant event uh, particularly a separation you're lonely because your spouse dies your best friend moves away you, you move to a totally different location where you don't know anybody and nobody knows you the Apostle Paul dealt with situational loneliness in 2 Timothy 4. He says to Timothy two times, why don't you come and see me? Verse 9, he says, do your best to come to me soon. Verse 21, do your best to come before winter. Now, except in his case, it was, it was even worse type of loneliness uh, because it was not caused by involuntary separation but also rejection. And that's the most painful cause of loneliness when somebody that you thought loved you somebody that you thought cared about you turns their back on you and abandons you second timothy 4 10 paul says for demas because he loved this world has deserted me that's a good example of situational loneliness third is chronic loneliness it's the worst loneliness of all it's where people tend to become preoccupied with themselves and with their problems in effect they determine to be lonely Dr. Young classifies chronic loneliness as individuals who feel lonely for more than two years after a traumatic event. In other words, they become lonely because they want to be lonely. They're loners. Uh, and this is chronic. It's, it's something that they're going to have a hard time shaking. They're alone, and they started to like being alone. Their problem isn't separation, it's isolation. Solomon talked about people like this. Proverbs 18.1, whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. And when a person gets to this point, uh, he not only will not talk to anybody, but he also will not listen to anybody. He won't take any kind of advice. That type of insulation and that type of isolation can lead to psychological and spiritual devastation. But I believe one of the greatest causes of loneliness is a lack of a true, real, intimate relationship with God. Have you ever thought about the fact that one of the first human emotions that Adam ever had after the sin in the Garden of Eden was loneliness? He knew that his fellowship with God had been cut off by sin. It drove a wedge between him and Eve. So there is no greater loneliness that people feel that not only when you are cut off from the people around you, but also from the God who is above you. So take stock right now. If you're battling with loneliness and ask yourself, why are you lonely? Because there are certain things that you can do that can cause you to be lonely, that you can correct, that you can change so that you can deal with it and manage it. And this leads us to the most important thing we need to discuss, stopping the power of loneliness. Loneliness is a void that needs to be filled, and it's a void that lonely people want to be filled. Many people will go to great lengths to try to do that. There was a man who went to see a psychiatrist one time, and he asked the psychiatrist if he could give him a split personality. The psychiatrist said, why do you want a split personality? He said, so I'd have somebody to talk to. Now listen, you don't need a split personality to take care of loneliness, but let me tell you what you can do. First of all, reach up. Reach up to the Lord. Jesus understands your loneliness. This psalm that we've been reading is called a messianic psalm. It's a prophecy of Jesus. The psalmist is talking about what Jesus experienced and what he felt. In fact, there was a moment on the cross that Jesus Christ experienced the ultimate loneliness that no human being had ever experienced or ever will experience. Psalm 102, 8. All the days my enemies taunt me. Those who deride me use my name for a curse. People still do that. For I eat ashes like bread and mingle tears with my drink because of your indignation and anger. For you have taken me up and thrown me down. Do you remember what Jesus said at the apex of his suffering on the cross? Of the seven things that he said from the cross, this was number four. It was in the, it was in the middle of the day. It was in the middle of his suffering. And he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus experienced the ultimate loneliness when even God, his own father, who had loved him from eternity past to eternity future, turned his back on him and left him totally alone. Even King David at the end of his life, when he wrote Psalm 23, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Jesus Christ walked through that valley by himself. 
He died alone, like a sparrow on a rooftop. At that moment, he was rejected by his father, but he had already been rejected by his friends and by his family. Even during his life in his hometown, a place where he grew up, people would not listen to him. John 1.11, he came to his own, and his own received him not. And on that cross, then he was rejected by his followers. Eleven of the twelve men that he had poured his life into, not one of them except for John, stood by his side in his greatest moment of need. And at that moment, Jesus Christ on the cross became the loneliest person who has ever lived or will ever live. And that's what I want to tell you. Even though you may be lonely, you are not alone. God the Father will not turn his back on you. God the Son will not turn his back on you. God the Holy Spirit will not turn his back on you. You can always talk to Jesus. You can always enjoy the presence of Jesus. You can always share with him your loneliness because he knows what it's like to be alone and he knows what it's like to be lonely. And by the way, if you're a child of God, you may be lonely, but it's not because you're alone. The Apostle Paul continues writing to Timothy in 2 Timothy 4. At my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. Amen. No matter what Paul went through, the Lord was always with him and he strengthened him that he might continue faithfully proclaiming the gospel. So as children of God, we can enjoy the permanent company of God the Father. Hebrews 13 says, For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We can enjoy the unbroken fellowship with God the Son. Matthew 28, 20. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. We can enjoy the continuing presence of God the Holy Spirit, who Jesus said will in John 14. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. So the first piece of advice I'd give you is to reach up. The second would be to reach out. Reach out to somebody who is hurting worse than you are. You may be lonely, but I promise you there's somebody that's lonelier than you. Befriend them and be a blessing to them. And think about this. if, If you're lonely and you go and minister to somebody else who is lonely, then two people are no longer lonely, you and that person. Somebody once said these wise words, It's no new thing to be lonely. It comes to us all sooner or later. If we try to retreat from it, we end in a darker hell. But if we face it, if we remember that there are a million others like us, if we try to reach out and comfort them and not ourselves, we find in the end we are no longer lonely. Now there's one other type of loneliness that we have to deal with because we're born with it. It's called spiritual loneliness. God created you and put you on this earth to have a personal relationship with him, but sin stands between that. Isaiah 59, verse 2. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. The reason why we feel lonely a lot of the times is because we expect other people to meet the needs in our lives that only Jesus Christ can. There are certain spiritual needs you have in your life. Number one, being a relationship with God that made you. What we often call loneliness is really homesickness for God, that God shaped whole in our heart. We just never really recognize that. The the greatest loneliness of any human being will ever know is to stand before the judgment seat of God, all alone, without Jesus, and have to spend all of eternity alone in hell, truly separated from God forever. And that is exactly why Jesus Christ came to this earth and died on the cross, so that he could solve the problem of spiritual loneliness. If you're an unbeliever here today, open up your life to Jesus Christ. Tell Jesus you want to know him, you want to love him, you want to have a relationship with him, repent of your sins, and receive him as your Savior. And when you do that, get baptized, join a church family, get involved in a church like Oak Grove, a place that will love you, a place that will stand with you, minister to you, and help you grow. Join a Sunday school. Join a small group. At 11 o'clock today, in every building on this campus, there's going to be small groups and Sunday schools meeting. If you're lonely, you don't have to be. In fact, if you're lonely today, it's your own fault. Because there are a whole bunch of things that you can get involved with. Get involved with ministry. 
See, the real reason that so many Christians are lonely is because they're sitting when they ought to be serving. You'll never know Judith Bucknell. She was murdered in Miami in the summer of 1980. She was stabbed seven times and strangled. Judith kept a diary, a diary that is very revealing of what killed this woman at the age of 38. Had you looked at her, you would have never dreamed she had any problems. She had a successful job as a secretary. She was not on drugs. She was not a social outcast. She was very well respected. She wore nice clothes, had a beautiful apartment overlooking the bay. But her problem was loneliness. She wrote in her diary that was found after she was murdered, I see people together and I am so jealous and I want to throw up. What about me? What about me? She was a loser at love. In her search to cure her loneliness, she went through 59 men in 56 months. She once wrote in her diary, where are the men with the flowers and the champagne and the music? Where are the men who call and ask for a genuine actual date? I would like to have in my life, once before I pass through my life, the kind of relationship which is part of a loving relationship. And evidently, she never did find that loving relationship. Not long before she was murdered, she wrote these words. Who is going to love Judy Buck now? I feel so old, unloved, unwanted, abandoned, used up. I want to cry and sleep forever. I'm alone, and I want to share something with somebody. Now, the autopsy report said she died from the wounds of a knife, but the fact is her heart had died long before from loneliness. All, Jesus, all, all Judith had to do was reach up to Christ, reach out to him, give, her, give Jesus her heart, give Jesus her sin. She would have received it abundant and eternal life she would have never been lonely again listen whether it's surrendering your life to christ seeking others who need ministry or serving others that need you you can overcome your loneliness today the moment you come to know god through his son jesus christ you'll never be lonely again let's pray together heavenly father we give you praise and thanks for your word that speaks to us through the corridors of time and space we thank you for your blessed son jesus who suffered and died for our sins, God. Lord, I pray for those here today. I know loneliness is such a common emotion, a common feeling that we all have, and oftentimes we suffer in silence. Lord, I pray for that person today or people that are suffering. Maybe they're not part of a small group. Uh, maybe they don't engage in ministry. Lord, I pray that today would be the day that they would commit to you and to themselves, that they're going to take that first step in solving their loneliness. We're a family of faith, and there's no reason why anyone should have to live with feelings of rejection and isolation. God, I pray for the unbeliever here today who has been separated from you by their sin. I pray, Lord, that you would do what only you can do, that you would convict their hearts, that you would show them their sin and their need for Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to heaven, there is no other way and no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So, Father, I just pray that you will move during this time of invitation in the hearts, in the minds, and in the lives of each one here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you and you would like to ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins, he is faithful and just, he will do just that. You bring your sin to, to the cross. You lay it down, you turn towards the Savior, and you receive the salvation that only Jesus can give you. Our staff's going to be down front during this time of invitation. If you'd like to be baptized, if you'd like to join our church, or if you just need somebody to pray with you, please come as the Spirit moves you.